Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving another non-standard equation. We have 2 to the power x minus 1 on one side and 1 over x on the other side. And we're going to be solving for x values. Now, when you see a problem like this, probably the first thing you do is guess and check, right? The problem with guess and check is it doesn't necessarily give you all the solutions or you can't guarantee. But the good thing is at least you get one solution and then you could hopefully work off of that. So let's go ahead and manipulate this equation a little bit to make guessing a little easier. I know it's easy as is, but we'll make it even easier. Let's go ahead and write this as 2 to the power x divided by 2 to the first power, which is 2, equals 1 over x. And then after cross multiplication, this gives us x, 2 to the x equals 2. And at this point, you probably guess that x equals 1 is a solution. All right? Not the only solution necessarily because we have to show if there are any other solutions or prove there are no other solutions. Okay? So that's going to be our million dollar question. Are there any other solutions besides x equals 1? So we're going to go ahead and use a very special function which we used recently. I think it was a video about 8 to the power x minus 1 equals x to the 7th power. We used it and it was kind of painful because the way the equation is given uh, it's a little painful, but this one is going to be a lot simpler, uh, smoother. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to use natural logs. Uh, now, our goal is the following. Since we want to use Lambert's W function, we want to put our expression in the following form. So, we want to get something like t e to the t equals something else. So, because what happens is, let's say this is equal to some constant c, okay? Now, when you have this situation, you can go ahead and Lambert both sides, and that's going to give you, by definition, T from here. So T is going to be the Lambert W of C. So whatever is, uh, T is, of course, in this case. So you do need an E at the base, not a 2. 2 is not a good thing. So instead of 2, we need to have an E. How do we convert it from 2 to E? That's going to be the main question, right? And we could use an identity. Obviously, you can basically write something like a as e to the power ln a. And then, of course, 2 to the power x can be written as e to the power ln 2 to the power x. But this x can be moved, and we can basically write this as e to the power x ln 2. Make sense? So 2 to the power x can be written as e to the power x ln 2. And you can generalize this if you want to write it as a to the power x. That can be written as e to the power x ln a. So a to the x and e to the x are kind of related. In other words, a to the x is a power of e to the x. So the correcting factor in this case is going to be ln a. And remember, when we do derivatives, we differentiate. To differentiate a to the power x, we write the same thing and then multiply by ln a in calculus, right? That's why we use this ln a right here. That kind of explains that rule as well. Make sense? So you don't have to memorize the rule for a to the x. If you know e to the x, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, then you can pretty much uh, produce the other results from here. Okay? So let's see how we can convert it. So we're going to re uh, replace 2 to the x with this, e to the x ln 2, e to the x ln 2. And of course, that doesn't change anything on the right-hand side because we didn't do anything to both sides, right? We just wrote it differently. Now, here's the thing. Since we want t e to the t, let's just forget about all this for now. And our focus is on getting something like t e to the t. I do have my e to the t, but I don't have my t. Make sense? So let's make some t. How do you turn this into x ln 2? The answer is very simple. Multiply by ln 2. That's the cool thing about it. Multiply both sides by ln 2, and you're going to you're gonna get what you want. Okay? And of course, we have to do it on both sides, and that's what we get. Now, here's the good part. We now have t e to the t, and now we can Lambert this, or w this. So, w x ln 2 times e to the power x ln 2 is just going to be x ln 2, and that's going to equal the Lambert's w function of 2 ln 2. So, in other words, x ln 2 is going to be Lambert's w of, actually, uh, 2 ln 2. Okay? But here's the problem. How do you Lambert this? 2 ln 2. And the result is going to be kind of funny because when you 
use a Lambert's W function on something, it usually uh, it's changed a great deal. But in this case, it's a little different. Anyways, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write the 2 ln2 as ln2 times e to the power ln2. And when you apply Lambert's W function to this, remember, it's going to give you ln2 because it's in the form t e to the t. Remember that? When you have t e to t as an input, the output is always t. In other words, this is the inverse function for t e to the t. Make sense? So this is going to give us ln2. That's kind of funny though, right? Lambert's, Lambert W of 2 ln2 is just half of that. So we can kind of come up with an equation actually. This might be a future video. Lambert uh, W of x equals half of x and find x from here. Okay? Anyways, that's a different story. Let's proceed with our solution. So we got the following from here. I hope that wasn't too confusing. Notice that I got this and I got that. And they're equal. So we have now x ln2 equals ln2. We can divide both sides by ln2 and this gives us x equals 1. Obviously, this should be obvious from the very start, from the get-go, but we were trying to check for multiple solutions. But we still haven't answered that question, did we? How many solutions are there, right? So let's go ahead and look at this from a calculus perspective a little bit. So suppose y is equal to x 2 to the power x minus 1, or I could probably just write it as f of x equals 2 to the power x minus 1. Now this is an exponential function, and let's write g of x as 1 over x. Notice that f of x is exponential, therefore, and the base is greater than 1, this is going to be an increasing function, right? Great. And 1 over x, what kind of function is that? It's the reciprocal, but it's actually a rational function. And rational functions have asymptotes. You have to look at the end behavior. You have to look at vertical, horizontal, asymptotes, x-intercept, y-intercept, so on and so forth. This one doesn't have any intercepts, but it kind of looks like this. It kind of looks like this. So is it increasing or decreasing? Well, looking at the graph, it looks like it's decreasing, but let's go ahead and verify that. So if you differentiate g, you're going to get negative 1 over x squared. Remember, the derivative of 1 over x, it's good to memorize these things because they're going to come up a lot. And since the derivative, the first derivative is always negative regardless of the x value, that means gx is always decreasing. So you kind of have like an increasing function and a decreasing function intersecting at a single point because if one of them goes up, the other one goes down, they have to intersect at a single point. And let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of these two functions. Hopefully I made the graph. Oh, it looks like I did. Great. And as you can see here, x equals 1 is the only solution because they intersect at a single point as can be seen on the graph. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.